hello, hello. Ever since I received this ship, the Imperator Nikolai, in a Christmas box, I have had many requests to feature it in a commentary. Now, one of the first things you might notice when you look at this profile of this battleship is that it looks quite weird. In fact, you might notice that it feels like something is missing, and that's of course the superstructure. It literally has no superstructure. Those two smokestacks and that little t tower thing in the back, that's pretty much all the superstructure this ship has. It pretty much has no superstructure at all. Now, that's of course a fantastic advantage against pretty much everything Royal Navy cruisers want to shoot AP at your superstructure. Well, sorry, no can do. Ships that want to spam HE at you, well, sorry, no superstructure to spam uh, HE at. So, massive advantage. Of course, uh, landing HE, sh not being able to land HE shells also means a slimmer profile, a uh, smaller chance of being hit. Once again, an advantage. So, the ship design itself is a huge advantage. Another thing you might have noticed is that the turrets, the front three turrets, are able to rotate around the bow side, meaning unlike the back turret, which has, which has to rotate uh, the whole way around, you can just uh, flip them from side to side easily without having to make any major maneuvers. Now, that is of course a huge advantage. Of course, the turret traverse on the ship is actually garbage. Uh, the turret traverse is 56 seconds, I think, on 180 uh, degrees, which means it takes absolutely ages for these turrets to rotate. But that weakness is pretty much largely negated by this ability to flip the turrets from side to side so easily. So the actual weakness that you might expect isn't really that big. In fact, the slow turret traverse has the smallest impact on this ship of pretty much all the battleships out there. It has 12 guns, of course, which is pretty massive, especially since it's able to bring all these 12 guns on the same target with the one broadside. So 12 305mm guns, and I think they are the hardest hitting AP shells of that caliber as well. So extremely potent, uh, as you can see here. But of course, once again, there is a weakness involved here, and that's the fact that the reload is a pretty massive 36 seconds, which I'm pretty sure is the slowest reload of all battleship guns in the entire game. In fact, I can't really think of any ba battleship that has a longer reload than that. So, a very long reload, very slow guns, but in return, these guns actually have a 2.0 Sigma. Now, Sigma represents the vertical dispersion, and the higher the value, the better. And having a 2.0 Sigma is actually very, very good. In fact, the ship that has the best vertical dispersion in the game is the Yamato, which has a Sigma of 2.1. And this has 2.0. In comparison, I think something was at New York or New Mexico or something had like a Sigma of 1.5. So you can see just how good the Sigma is on the Nikolai. Absolutely fantastic. Don't quote me on that number of 1.5, but I can't remember any good example ship that had 1.5. But it pretty much, uh, all the ships fit in a bracket. 1.5 to 2.1, with 2.1 being the Yamato, the absolute pearl. Now, actually has really good HE as well, 33% fire chance and pretty good fire, uh, chances of setting fire, um, pretty good base HE damage, but you don't really want to use the HE because the AP volleys are pretty insane. You can see just the accuracy, how consistently you are able to deal damage at range to enemy ships. In fact, this is kind of your, your optimal distance is kind of around 10 km. You don't really want to get closer. You have a range of 14.1. At max range, you can still land very devastating volleys, uh, but you kind of want to get a bit closer than that. Of course, you do have a stealth of 12.4. I don't have a concealment captain on this yet, and I'm not even certain if I would go for a concealment captain. But you also have a base concealment of 12.4, even without a captain. So you are actually very stealthy for a battleship. And as you can see, even just landing one Citadel at this tier, this is a Kuma, which is a same tier as a MIDI cruiser. It's quite easy to get devastating strikes in this ship because of its power. And, uh, well, there's actually so many ships here, and I'm the furthest pushed up ship. Uh, the DDs are undetected. So I'm actually going to do something you really never should do, but I'm going to do it to preserve HP in the future. And that is give broadside. Um, the Citadel on the ship is quite high in the water. So any sort of giving broadside is fairly risky. Now, this ship has a really good broadside uh, 
broadside armor, very full, uh, strong broadside armor actually, and it even has uh, a 75 millimeter turtle back. So yes, it even has a turtle back. So it can be quite tricky to citadel, but if you do get broadside broadsides like that, you will suddenly eat quite a large chunk of damage. So in general, you should abuse one of the great strengths of this ship, which is of course the fantastic turret angles, meaning you are able to angle backwards and forwards very, very efficiently with your turrets while keeping your armor angled. And as soon as you're angled, you're, you take almost no damage, because as mentioned before, there's very little superstructure to hit, and the actual waterline armor on this ship is sublime. You see how you should see how many shells I'm being shot at by tier four battleships now. There's all these tier four battleships. I'm taking zero damage, absolutely zero. So fantastically tanky. It does actually have uh, the upper bow part of the armor is actually quite thin. I think it was something. What would have been something like 18 90 millimeter armor at the front so it can actually be overmatched quite easily if you allow it to but you should never really be pointing straight bow on towards an enemy battleship and make it easy for them and at this range with the accuracy your average lower tier battleship will have well they're gonna struggle trying to hit that part of your ship so sitting at range ob obviously favors this ship very very much another thing is of course that the deck the deck armor on the ship is 35 millimeters thick which means that it's immune to he shells that are less than 210 millimeters in diameter now less than 210 in fact the only one get that can even get to 203 millimeter that you can face of a cruiser is i think what the kirov and didn't the kirov have 200 and Look, Kirov has 180, never mind, and uh, which else? Uh, we have the Furtaka that can reach 203 millimeter. But the deck on this ship is completely immune to all that HE. All these other lower tier cruisers, Kumas and all these, if they hit the deck, uh, they do zero HE damage. And of course, because it has no superstructure either, uh, well, once again, very hard to get any sort of HE damage on this thing. It's just ridiculously enduring towards HE. Fires of course do damage, but HE next to nothing. I deleted that Kuma back there with a quick citadel. And honestly I've been tanking quite a bit, so I'm trying to get these I'm hoping that this Wyoming and this Kaiser, who's right next to me, they're both H full HP, they would push up a bit and tank for me. But so far they seem quite lazy on doing that. Now the ship does have some weaknesses of course. First of all it's a battleship. So it's very, very slow. These lower tier battleships are in general quite slow. I think this one has a top speed of 21 knots. So it kind of fits in with the US battleships in terms of speed. And uh, well, the secondaries aren't really anything special. They got like a 3.7 km range, I think. So I mean, if a DD YOLO rushes you, then they can help you. But if a DD is within 3.7 of you, you're already going to be in huge trouble to begin with. Um, and the AA, of course, the AA needs to be mentioned. This ship has absolutely no AA. It has probably the most pitiful AA of them all. Uh, in fact, carriers will always be your absolute number one main threat. Battleships, well, you saw that Wyoming shoot at my angled armor, zero damage once again, and that's going to become a theme in this. And my return volley, of course, this is what, 12 came away. Let's see, how much do I do? Oh, only 14,000 damage. And you saw out of those shells I hit like, what, 6, 7? And anyone who's low played lower tier battleships knows that that kind of accuracy just doesn't happen with the other battleships. That's definitely a Nikolai specialty. So, but yeah, the AA is pitiful, so carriers are always going to be one of your massive, massive weaknesses. So, how do you play this ship then? Well. What I'm doing here is a pretty good example. First of all, I'm be if you haven't noticed, I've been staying angled a lot. Constantly, constantly angled. Making sure that they have a very hard time getting any sorts of uh, good volleys on me. In fact, the only time I turn and give any sort of broadside is when I want to fire these guns. And as I said, the guns have a 36 second reload. So you can spend a good time of the battle angled. And of course, if they give you broadside, you can punish them quite heavily. And another thing, of course, is you want to keep a certain amount of distance. 
you don't want to be the first guy in. First of all, the uh, torpedo protection is quite weak. It's got 16%, I think, torpedo protection. And of course, as I said, carriers are a massive threat. So you don't want to make it easier for easy for carriers or destroyers to be launching torps at you. So keep playing a bit at the distance is a good thing. Second of all, the ship is not a brawler. If you have heard me mention some of these points, it's slow. It's got very slow reload guns. It's got a terrible turret traverse. All of these are things that you don't want when brawling. In fact, if we look at DPM, which is of course a highly misleading statistic, but if we look at DPM, uh, we can see that uh, it in fact has probably one of the lowest DPMs of tier four. In fact, the only ship that has lower DPM, AP DPM is the Mayogi that has what, three turrets, but Wyoming, Kaiser, all of these have something like 190 or 200K AP DPM, whereas the Nikolai only has 170K. So when you go into brawling, uh, things that lose value is angling because you're unable to angle as uh, effectively because you're close range. Armor values also tend to drop off because you're so close that you punch through armor regardless. Um, turret angles, they don't matter as much anymore either because once again you're brawling. And things that do matter highly is reload times, turret traverse, and uh, well, AP DPM. So if you decide to go brawling in this thing, well, base, and of course accuracy doesn't matter either because when you're close to an enemy you're going to hit him regardless. So if you go brawling you basically give up all your natural advantages that you have over enemy battleships and you swing the advantage in their favor. If you want to see how un- or non-overpowered this ship is then just brawl with it and you'll quickly see that you, something like a Kaiser that has a more effective turtle back can probably wreck you quite easily in a brawling battle simply because his turret traverse and his maneuverability and his tankiness and all this uh, and his faster reload all of these things are gonna wreck you in close range but you obviously shouldn't play it like that you should avoid brawling the ship uh, basically as much as you can in fact this angle that I'm holding here, you see, well, this Wyoming has been shooting at me and a Kaiser has been shooting me from the other side, and I'm just sitting here, angled, tanking it all. I'm taking it all in and I don't care. And that's how you want to be doing it. You want to be, re you want to remain at a certain distance. Now, you don't have to, that doesn't mean you have to play like a pussy, like, for example, this Wyoming behind me who's been sitting with full HP the entire game, or this Kaiser who only now is pushing up even though he's full HP. But it also means that you shouldn't be the YOLO guy in, you shouldn't be the first guy in, you shouldn't be the one pushing into brawl. In fact, if an enemy battleship is charging you, you most likely want to turn away and kite him and kill him while kiting him away because you can, of course, angle towards, angle towards him while kiting him and you can use your great accuracy, you can use your great turret angles, you can use all these fantastic advantages that you have if you kite him and kill him. But as soon as you decide to charge in there and you decide to brawl him face to face, mano a mano, that's when all the natural advantages this ship has, all the things that makes this ship overpowered, you're basically throwing them out the window. So brawling is definitely out the window on this thing. It's not a good brawler at all. I mean, against potatoes who give you full broadside, like if Wyoming charges up and gives you full broadside and allows you to angle and uh, never does anything, of course, yeah, it's going to be good against that. But in general, none of the characteristics the, ships ha the ship has are suited for brawling. Jesus, that accuracy. Did you see that? Like, that dispersion, those shells, how clumped together they were. It's just, that was what, 13.5k... Uh, Vol range volley that's one of the strengths of this ship that's absolutely one of the fantastic strengths of this ship and no of no other battleship in the game can be as deadly at range at this 14 game range as you can be so the second you push into the brawling range well you throw that advantage you have out the window because well at close range they'll be able to hit you just as easily as you can hit them well enough anyways enough said about that um, damage wise, well I've actually done what, 134k damage, I do have an Isokaz here, and of course as I said, DDs are a threat, oh he turned away just before my volley could land, DDs are of course a huge threat to you because this very very long reload and this slow turret traverse uh, means that you often have to turn your entire ship to make your uh, guns keep track of the enemy DD, and uh, well Torpedo belt, 16%, not exactly impressive. That's 16%, I think, with the module that increases it. I think without it, it's even lower. 
I'm not entirely 100% certain on that, but don't quote me on that, but regardless, the value is extremely low. Let's see, oh, he's charging. Which one is he torping though, the Kaiser or me? Next attempt. Oh, so unlucky. Um, it's actually quite common, especially if DD is charging this ship, to one-shot them. Um, because once again the great accuracy and just how many shells you have in the air at the time you are capable of one-shotting them just with over pens I mean 10 over pens with this thing is already 8.6k HP and when you got these ships that have like 10k or sub 10k HP uh, all you need is one good penetration and a couple of over pens and you pretty much delete them Oh, Wakataka went in for the YOLO hit Pretty sure he torpedoed me uh, That's unfortunate I'm gonna eat one. Torpedo on the nose, of course, for those that aren't aware, any torpedoes eaten on the nose or the bow section is a 100% chance of a flooding. So, um, it always depends. Um, it's, it's very dependent on how you want to eat torpedoes, but if you don't have a repair up, eating it on your torpedo belt is usually better. But if you do have a repair up, then angling like that and eating one and you can repair it afterwards might be better. But for example, if I had my repair on cooldown there, uh, giving broadside and eating two torps to the belt would probably have been better than eating one to the nose and then flooding to death. So, of course, they have a high chance of flooding even if they hit the belt as well. But anytime you hit one, take one on the nose or on the bow, this, oh, sorry, on the bow or the stern. Any time you take one, you're gonna get a 100% chance of flooding. So you need to keep that in mind. This applies to all battleships at all tiers, including Yamato, Cross Quarter Force Montana. This applies to everything. If you take it on the nose or on the bow, um, on the nose you have guaranteed flooding, on the bow you have guaranteed flooding and a extremely high chance of losing your rudder. So you need to take those things into account when you eat the torpedoes. Jeez, so I really do love the accuracy. Got a bit unlucky with four shells just shattering, but the accuracy values on this ship is just fantastic. So what is it that makes this ship overpowered? Well, as you can see, have probably seen in this game already, insanely tanky when you angle it properly. If you play to its strengths, which are of course staying angled and allowing your armor to actually do work and allowing your incredible turret angles to do work, so then you have this fantastic, extremely accurate, extremely powerful volleys that you can shoot out combined with the tankiness, combined with the lack of superstructure. You're just... it's a combination of insane damage potential and insane tanking potential for a tier 4 battleship that is. So there's a reason why this ship is no longer sold and that's of course it's quite overpowered. 150k damage in a tier 4 game. Considering how much I was tanking, I quite like it. Uh, Dreadnought, you're unlikely to get that fire resistance thing. Uh, of course, it's tier 4, so matchmaking will always put you against T3 or T5. And here we can look. I tanked 78,000 damage in this battle. 78k damage tanked. And let's look at some other stats. Wyoming, tier 4 battleship, shot me 26 times with AP, 16k damage. Kaiser shot me 17 times, Kuma, HE, 22 hits, 1k damage, 1k damage with 22 HE hits from a tier 4 cruiser, Kaiser, uh, 5 AP hits, the other Kaiser, 25 AP hits, 26k damage, so I had 4 different tier 4 battleships and a tier 4 cruiser all shooting at me and their damage was pitiful because of my armoring and my angle, in fact looking at my potential damage, Total damage potential of ammunition fired at your warships, 2.5 million. That's how much damage potential I soaked up just sitting there and allowing them to shoot at me. That's how insanely tanky this ship can be. So definitely no joke when it comes to the sheer ability to endure damage. Anyway, let's go over my recommended build for this ship. Before I start, here's a quick peek at the armor. 4 end armor belt, 100 mm, 200, 270 mm. So you can imagine when you angle like this, there's literally only this bow you can, you can overmatch that there's to hit. The armor belt itself, 270, the lower 175. So if you do give broadside, you can get pinned there. But when you angle in the ship, like, there's so little actual areas to do damage besides that bow. And if you keep a distance, actually landing shells 
um, accurately on that bow to our matchet is quite difficult. And well, you can see the superstructure, the, these two towers. The tower, the tower, and those small things at the back. That's the only superstructure the ship has. Nothing else counts as superstructure. It's a ridiculously flat ship, and which is of course a huge advantage. Anyway, consumable wise, uh, premium repair and heal. Uh, upgrade wise, main armaments mod 1, so you don't lose turrets. This can happen sometime because you actually have a fairly thin uh, barbette armor, so you can get turrets knocked out, so reducing the chance is probably the best one. Getting any of the others is kind of pointless since your secondaries and AA are both pretty much garbage. Damage control, slightly better torpedo protection and protection against fire. You don't really lose engine or uh, steering, so don't really need the rest. Build, basics of survivability, expert marksman. I only have a 12 point captain, so I've gone for superintendent, vigilance and then of course high alert for a shorter reload time on the repair and of course vigilance is very important on the ship as I said because torpedoes are a weakness tier 4 perks manual fire control pretty pointless AFT pretty pointless survivability expert eh, it's tier 4 so it only gives you what 1.6k HP demolition expert you don't really shoot the HE Concealment Expert is the only one that I'd want from tier 5, but even then I might even get Jack of All Trades instead because the concealment on the ship is already so good. So, I mean, ultimately I'm kind of happy with the build I have right now. You don't really need many captain perks on the ship to make it strong. Uh, if I had to go for the higher tier perks, I'd probably go for AFT and then, I don't know, Jack of All Trades or Stealth. I'd have to test both, but I think both would be quite strong. But ultimately, just going for these tier 3 perks have been the best for me so far. In fact, I might even go for something ridiculous like fire prevention until I get enough points because I don't really see the value in them yet because he gets the ship gets so little out of all these tier 4 perks right now. Anyway, that was my Nikolai commentary and hopefully I was able to explain why the ship is so overpowered and why it's no longer sold at all and probably never is going to be sold again. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.